This little guy is a Murano clown, and he's only priced at $15. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hello again, this is George the Antique Nomad, and I am in a cute little town called Hazel, Kentucky, right on the Tennessee border. And you can see this is actually a fairly busy little town, considering it's way off the main track. Hazel was never a big town, but it has a lot of old storefronts from about 1900 to 1910 that have mostly turned into antique stores. Horse's Mouth is a good mall, and we'll see if we have time to get in there. And then next door, it looks like Willow Tree is just open. I won't have time to film everything, but I wanted to show you one great store across the street. It is called Mantiques, and you can see it behind me there. Its name is a little misleading because, yes, it is guy-oriented, but there is stuff for everybody in there. So let's go in and take a look. Here's a neat old sign for shoes and boots from Service Rubber Company in Rock Island, Illinois, designed in New York, as you see. They did the spin caster, which was a lot like heads back in the 50s and 60s. This sign is priced at $6.90. I've never seen this brand before. Got to be rare. They've got some neat Petroliana in here. The old Sinclair Dino Supreme. This is when the pumps turned squarish in the early 1960s, where they didn't have to be as gravity fed. A restored Gulf Oiler. This is a marine gas pump, that's why you have the various mixtures and each one is a different price. A very inexpensive price compared to what we're used to now. And there's a boat motor, an Evinrude 7-Up open sign, that's going to be from the 1950s or 60s. Here's a cool old clock, Archer's Vitalized Feeds, and look how happy the three pigs are. Apparently that feed is really working on them. Then we're going to pull back here and show some other neat stuff. I love the front from the post office there. I did an appraisal a couple of years ago on a post office front from a town that was taken away because the government dammed and flooded the area. And I think we ended up appraising that at about $2,500. Cool old ice cream cone from a display here. And then the Southern Pacific Lines, that is a neat old train station sign from back in 1940s approximately. So this place has a lot of really great cool advertising pieces, but they also have smalls. And this dealer is having a sale and I am shopping, so we're gonna take a look in here real quickly. I think I found some things in here the last time. You've got everything from the Hattie Carnegie black brooch. Hattie Carnegie is one of the most desirable names in costume jewelry right now. That's priced with the discount at about 110, and honestly, it's worth about that. And then you've got the Packard service, someone from their old uniform. This is a cute piece of Weller cameo. I have not really seen this little basket before. You see a lot in this wear. It's got a good signature on the bottom, Weller, for Weller Pottery out of Ohio. This is from about 1930. They were competing with Roseville. They always did compete with Roseville. They went out of business in the Depression about eight years after this was made. Very pretty pair of Art Nouveau nude bookends. Frankie's got it in a box here. And these are original. I would say they're actually more Art Deco. They look like they might be new art, but it is hard to read that. Actually, it is a different company, ATPS. I am not familiar with them, but they're similar to new art and frank art from the era. And with the discount, those are priced at approximately $95, which is a pretty good price for those. This looks like Blue Mountain Pottery from Canada, but this is actually more likely to be one of their competitors. It is made in Canada and it is LaBelle. 
the Canuck pottery made in Labelle. There were several Canadian companies that basically did takeoffs on what Blue Mountain was doing when Blue Mountain became popular. And that little piggy bank is $26. And then there's an old car clock. It's in a leather case, but you can tell it's a car clock because it's got the winder at the bottom. And the reason was that would have been taken out and set in your dashboard and that way you could wind it from the bottom. Now we see a lot of mason jars, but this one is an older version called the Marion jar. And it's got that embossed on the top and that makes it a little more desirable. This is going to date to sometime right around 1900. You see the original patent date is 1858. They went through various styles and the Marion was one of them. And it's the light blue color, which we see more often, but the fact that it says the Marion jar makes it worth about $75, which is what they've got on it. Here's a nice grape patterned Goofus glass bowl. It is losing some of its color, though. That's the problem with Goofus glass. It does tend to want to do that. Here's a Welcome Home POWs button. You saw a lot of these in the Vietnam era because there were a lot of prisoners of war and we would do exchanges of prisoners and other negotiations to try to get them back home. That was something that was a phenomenon going on through the 1970s. And a lot of people really suffered in that war. John McCain, who died recently, the Republican politician, was a POW. and. He might be the most famous one of the Vietnam POWs, but there were a lot of our men who went through that experience. Okay, we're going to go in the next room here and see some other stuff. There's the fall guy. He was a stuntman, of course, and that was a popular TV show. Okay, so this is an NFL lunchbox. If you don't see your favorite team on here, it may be that your favorite team was not in business in 1978. There's the Seattle Seahawks. They had been moved to the American Conference at that point. And there are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At that point, they were both two-year-old teams and were just starting to get their footing in the league. We've got Heathcliff the cat. We've got Peanuts. So a lot of these are 1970s vintage, and it seems like they are the old metal ones, and the prices are in the $30 and $40 range. So real quickly, I wanted to say, please do subscribe if you haven't before. We would love to have you join us every week. We're here Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And in the meantime, let's see more of this place. This is a console set, and we should talk about what a console set is. The console set sat on a console table, which is essentially a sideboard, and it was generally this bowl and two candlesticks. This particular pattern is Fostoria's Corsage, I believe. Very pretty bow knot pattern. And it's in the happy yellow. This is a topaz yellow. We can see it a little better in this light. So it's got a little bit of an amber shade to it. This was elegant depression glass, meaning if you had money in the depression, you got this rather than the stuff that was given out at the movie theaters and in the boxes. This was made by companies that took a little more pains with it, and they would fire polish, they'd make sure there weren't bubbles in the glass. That's why you see a more open pattern than you usually do on depression glass. Depression glass had very intricate patterns in order to hide the flaws. There is a neat old red wing cookie jar on the right from about 1910 and on the left is a salt crock with lid. Those are both priced in the 170 to 180 range. We'll take a look at these building shape bookends over here. This is something I like. These are Sirocco wood which is a pressed wood and resin material and they've got the heraldic eagle. These would have been probably from the Second World War era or slightly afterwards. And they're only priced at $10. It's actually pretty reasonable for what they are. And as much of a bookend fan as I am, I think I'm going to get those for that price. This store actually has a lot of carnival glass. 
This one's got nice color. This I believe is called Hollyberry, as opposed to Halleberry, but you get the idea why looking at the pattern. The glass is blue, but there's good iridescence and a lot of different shading. And then down here, we have an old Fenton bonbon. This is a lotus pattern. You notice the color is a little weaker on this. This probably was left in the sun for a long time or was washed in something it shouldn't have been, like an ammonia cleanser and has not got as strong an iridescence. And so it's not as valuable to collectors as a result. There's some orange Fenton. This thumbprint pattern was, orange was the 1960s Fenton color because orange was in with everybody. And we've got some chalkware here and the junior ironer. All this little stuff that was made for dollhouses is pretty collectible now. They're just really cute. They look good on top of shelves as displays. This is a mangle. It would have been, uh, they called them a mangle, I guess, because you would mangle yourself with them if you weren't careful, but there it is. It actually works. And you would run the giant size of these, which they were big, uh, were popular because you could easily sort of wring and iron your clothes at the same time by feeding it through there. Here's the classic Erica phone made in Ohio from a Swedish design in the 1950s. If you had the bell system, you couldn't use this phone. It was only the smaller companies that could use this. It was not wired for bell system because bell system didn't want to pay the money to use this design. So Erica phones were made for people who had general telephone or one of those other systems back then when the telephones were all a monopoly in every little place. Turquoise is harder to find. It's priced at 70. The white one is also priced at 70. It's a little easier to find in white though. Here's a cool old thing. In fact, there's a bunch of neat stuff on this shelf. This is an old siren. You can see the big chrome housing. This would be from about 1940. This would have probably been on a fire truck. This is by the Federal Company. Priced at about $700, but they do go high, especially in such great shape. Now they do have another one down here, a lesser model, although still really nice, and it has been wired and it is in chrome. And that one's only 140, which is pretty reasonable for one of these. I did a big appraisal in Seattle for a couple who were divorcing and the fellow had collected a lot of this sort of stuff. And I can tell you that's actually a pretty good price. This is an old countertop vitamin display from a drugstore from about 1940. If you don't know your vitamins, know the maker, Park Davis Vitamin Products. Very Art Deco. And then this is a great 50s display for Philco transistor radios. I've had the pleasure of buying some of these old displays from this store. He really gets neat stuff. This one's a little over my budget at 390, but it is really cool. And there is a neat old Delco radio. AC Delco ended up being the music source for General Motors cars, so that may be a familiar name to a lot of you. I like these things. These were for countertops in the 50s and 60s, and this is where you would put your change. They also could be used in taverns because you could let bar glasses soak through this and wipe them off when you were taking them out to a table. But this one advertises Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. It's priced at $49. That's about the right price for one of these in perfect condition. This one, double your pleasure. It's the Double Mint Twins who were a marketing slogan for Double Mint Gum in the mid to late 60s. And you can tell it's mid to late 60s because this is AstroTurf. In other words, plastic grass, which was a very, very new idea. If you remember the Brady Bunch, they had AstroTurf in their back lawn. The old Imperial Fire Nozzle from Akron, Ohio, the Akron Brass Company, so it's going to say Akron on it also. This one's a fairly good one. PDQ is the name, and we 
know from the Second World War what that stands for pretty darn quick. And this is a pretty heavy duty fancy one with the double handles. It's priced at 190. Old nozzles do go in that price range because there is a lot of interest in firefighting collectibles. This is a neat monument for the woodmen of the world. This was a group of people who were lumbermen. Lumbering was a very dangerous occupation in the early 1900s. There wasn't good insurance. They really did everything they could to bust the unions. And so the woodmen of the world united as a fraternal organization in order to provide some of those benefits and help to one another. And this is a really neat piece. It's got the axes with wow, which is woodmen of the world on them. There's definitely interest in items pertaining to this in part of the country that I'm from up in the Northwest because the woodmen of the world were a big deal in Washington state as part of the lumbering industry as well. Here's an old funeral home parking sign in cast aluminum from about 1940. This would be to put in the parking space so that people would keep it clear during a viewing. I bought one of these at one of the road sales here, the highway 6880 sale several years ago in Kentucky and then flew back to Seattle to take it to the Portland Antique Show and I had to unscrew the base and ship it through but I had to carry the top part with me and hold it in my seat and boy I nobody sat next to me gee surprise <laughs> and then this is also funereal there is a lot of interest in funeral home related items uh, particularly among people who work in that industry now now we're going to get back into the mall spaces and see some other items that are going to be a little different than all this advertising and stuff, but they really do have cool things in here. This booth is having a 20% off sale, so we'll take a look and see if we can find anything to take home with us. Some neat old pictures. I really like this gal. Atala. There are many chocolate figures from the Art Nouveau figure made like this. This one is bronze finished. In other words, they did a bronze style patina on it. And most of them were to represent Native American women in a very stylized way, or just lovely women in general. This one is priced at $100. That's a very fair price for it. It's almost cheap enough to buy for resale. I think it would need to be just a little less for me, but she's in really good shape. This tended to chip easily because it is just chalk. And so the fact that she is in good condition really makes a big difference. And Look how pretty she is. Lay's Go Betweens for Lay's Potato Chips. That's also priced at 100 And that one's hard enough to find that that's about right. And more bookends, Gold Lions. Let's see what these are made of because they are priced at $28. If they're a nice heavy metal, I'd be tempted. But they are actually a little bit later. They're going to be 1960s or 70s and they're a resin. And for that price, I don't think I really want them. Old quilt here, a little bit threadbare. Belgian tapestry. I like those, but the market is not strong for those right now. And then let's see this blanket. That's got nice colors, 1950s looking with the primary colors. And it is priced at $30 with the discount. I have to say that that's kind of tempting. I recently did a thrifting video and I have to say I was very unimpressed with Goodwill, but Salvation Army had good stuff and was fairly priced. The Salvation Army Shield is priced at several hundred dollars. They're pretty hard to find in good shape. And let's see. These folks are also having a discount. Let's see what they've got. For a minute, I thought that said Deadly Chemical Company, but it's DD. If it said Deadly, I'd buy it. That made me laugh. Neat looking old round bird cage. That one is $70. A fair price. I believe that that is a Hendrix cage. It's a little hard to read the label, however. It looks like it's become scratched. 
but Hendrix was a company that made a lot of these, and you can tell by the metal stamping that this is going to date to the early 1900s. This little guy is a Murano clown, and he's only priced at $15 with the discount. He's got a marble in his hand. A lot of color to these. As clowns go, Murano clowns are some of the more collectible. A lot of these were done in the 1970s. Here are some neat Lucite purses. Look at this one with the cutouts. I did a video of a very nice collection of these from St. Petersburg, Florida in January of 2020. And there's a lot of information in that on the different makers. They were made in New York, they were made in Florida. They were made a few other places as well. The clutch at $85 is not a bad price, especially because it's 20% off, so that would make it 68. I'm tempted by that one, I may take a look. I'm not finding these very often now. Now the ones that mix with the metal are nice. They don't typically sell for as much, but that one's got some style, so we might look at that as well. They also have a bunch of vintage Bakelite, including this very nice manicure set in the case. That would date from about 1940. And then vintage spaghetti poodles. Boy, people really like the spaghetti poodles now. It's called spaghetti because it's this sort of applied little strands of porcelain that were used to make these. And so it has a rough texture, but it does make them look like poodles. Most of these were done in Japan in the 1950s and are very collectible now. These are in terrific shape, and this is something to look for because sometimes you'll see them not dishwashed to death. Usually the gold is missing on these because they went in the dishwasher a whole lot. But this is called Eclipse, and this was designed by Russell Wright, a late 50s pattern with these great polka dots. I think they came in a few other colors as well. I know there's a blue. And these are collectible and fairly valuable. They have 95 for the set of six. That's really a pretty reasonable price. That works out to about just over $15 each. And these are hard enough to find. I've seen them sell for, gosh, double that. Modernists really like this pattern. And then there's a bunch of Raggedy Ann, and these are older ones. Johnny Gruel was the artist and he started Raggedy Ann, I believe, in the 1910s. And of course, lots of us are familiar because Raggedy Ann's are still produced today. But these older books are collectible. And this set of seven, which dates between 1918 and 1932, is priced at $165, which is a little over $20 each. Actually, more like $25. And that's about the right price for some of these earlier ones. Children's books remain popular because people love reading them to kids and grandkids and then they have nostalgia for them because it's a connection to grandparents. And so these seem to never go out of style. And then because we are in the home of bluegrass, we should show Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and the Foggy Mountain Boys. This is a picture album, hymn and song book with the banjo chords written in by Earl Scruggs. There's another one behind. Flatt and Scruggs are two of the big names along with Bill Monroe. In the early days of bluegrass, bluegrass is a uniquely Kentuckian form of folk music and it's a lot of fun. There's a huge museum in Owensboro dedicated to bluegrass and it's well worth visiting if you're in the area. I remember as a kid these popcorn sets with the words all over them. My mom got one. They were very popular. I want to say they were by Libby Glass out of Toledo. In any event, they're collectible now. And there's an old black and white op art mirror. If this is vintage, which I believe it is, looking at the way it's made, it doesn't have those modern screws at the corners. So this is from about 1970, and they have it priced at 165. They are very collectible now. I had two that were swirling optics from that same era, and I have to say I got about that price for them. 
So they are not off on that. Well, here's a 1950s or 60s Japanese Florida Flamingo plate for $8. And it's on sale, so I'm actually going to get it for $6.50. And I will take it. It's got the Kenmar Japan logo on the back. And I am headed back to Florida soon, and this will sell down there. And in its place, I set these little pin cushions. They just look like Keith Haring style. Keith Haring did these very abstract figures in the 1980s and was a pretty famous artist when he died of AIDS. I believe that was in 1988 or 89. And his work has become rather collectible. I didn't see any mark on these or anything that makes it clear that they were his design. If they were, I would grab them because for $12, that's a good price. These are more bookends, Soraka wood again. I think I'm going to get these instead of the buildings because it's a much more exciting motif with the sailfish. Very Art Deco. Soraka wood starts being made in the 1930s, so you do get some pieces that have deco design. And with the discount, I'll be able to price these under 40. And in Florida, they should go for that. Please come and join me again for more adventures in the antique and vintage world. This is George the Antique Nomad. I'm on social media every day at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I do Periscope sometimes, and here on YouTube every Monday and Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, so we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us, and we'll come back to Hazel and see the rest of the town some other time. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!